Hello, pre-algebra students. We're going to continue our work with percents today. We're going to continue to find exact answers like we did with the proportion method, and we're going to take notes in a foldable just like we did with that one. However, today we're going to work with a new method called the equation method. So will you please find the page in your packet that has a foldable? It has the same three problems as it did with the proportion method, except for we're going to take new notes in them with the new method. Once you have found that page, flip it over to the blank back just like this so we can write our formula on it. Our equation is going to be part equals percent times whole. You already know how to find the part that's looking for the clue word is. The percent it has the percent sign on it and the whole is what it's taken out of. That will help you remember there. One time my husband was teaching this for me and he made up a silly picture that helped visual learners actually remember it. So let's draw that as well if you are a visual learner, it's optional. But for part, drew a, a girl with a part in her hair, it can be a boy, it doesn't matter. But part equals percent with the two hops to remind you that when we use percents in equations, we use the decimal form. So you put that there as a reminder to yourself times a whole, he took the other spelling of whole without the W and made something that has like a hole in it, so like a pair of shorts or something that has a hole in it. So it's a visual way to remind you what to do, part equals percent times whole. Once you have the formula at least written down, the part in red, the part in blue optional if you want, then let's flip back to the front. Once we're on the front, let's open up the first flap. Just as a reminder for you, what this says is what is 85% of 120. I'm just going to write it here. Since you can't see the front of my flap, you can choose to write it or you can just look on the front of yours, your choice. It tells us by the box that's on our problem that the is part is the missing part. So it means that's going to be the part where our variable is. And our formula was part equals percent times whole. And since our percent, we see right away 85%. Whenever I see my percent sign, I'll use that real quick. But I'm going to move that decimal twice to the left. So I'm going to write 0 0.85 times the whole amount. Well, I see here it's taken out of 120. So that's the whole. So I'm going to put that right there. And the part, of the segment out of the 120 is the part that's missing. So I'm going to put my X there. I already have my variable by itself in that case, so all I have to do is type in my calculator 0.85 times 120 and get my answer. So in this case, I will say x equals 102. And if you look back at your 6-1 notes where you did the proportion method, you'll see on this problem you also got 102 there. Okay, now let's open the middle flap. This was the flap that said 9 is 30% of what number? Now, it's not actually a complete sentence because it started with a number instead of a capital letter, but we will forgive that on the notes. And the of what? The uh, word of goes with the word what? So I know that the whole is the section that I'm missing. So again, if I want to think through my formula, your choice if it helps you to write it down each time so it's in front of you or the picture if that helps you. Again, I like to start with my percent because I see it. It jumps out at me right away. I can move that decimal two spots to the left. So I have a 0 0.30 or a 0 0.3 times the whole amount. What is it taken out of? I don't know. So I'm going to put an X there. Bring down my equal sign right beneath where it was. And the part is 9 because it has that word is with it. So I have 9 equals 0.3 times X. Well, do you remember what 0.3 times X is? Anytime you have a number times a variable, you just hook them together, so it's actually 0.3x. But we're trying to figure out what the x equals. So right now the x is being multiplied by the 3 tenths decimal. So to get rid of it, I divide by that 3 tenths decimal. And so then 9 divided by 0.3 on my calculator gives me 30. And then to make my final answer, I just always put the variable on the left. So x equals 30, just like when you worked it out in this one from the proportion method. Okay, now let's open the last flap. In case you are looking just on the inside like me, this is the problem that said 15 is what percent 
of 75. I'm just going to put the percent sign here. It had a 15 is. It told me it's taken out of 75. So the part that I'm actually missing here is the percent. So in my formula, where it says part equals percent times whole, I usually like to start with my percent number, but I can't because I don't know what it is. So in this case, my variable has to go in place of the percent. The whole amount is what it's taken out of, so that's the 75. And then my part on the left side of the equal sign is what the is says, and that is 15. So if I was going to simplify this down, I would have 15 equals, what is x times 75 again? That is 75x. The x is being multiplied by 75, so I'm going to divide by 75, and I have to do it on both sides. So I get 0 0.2 equals x. So x equals 0 0.2, but that's a decimal. The question doesn't ask me what is the decimal. The question asks me what is the percent. So do you remember how to change that percent decimal to a percent? You just make two hops to the right, so my final answer will be 20%. In the proportion method, you put that over 100, which means you're telling me it's already a percent. It's already out of 100. So once you solved it, you didn't have to change anything. In the equation method, equations don't really use percents. Equations use that decimal form of the percent. Remember, we would have taken the percent and moved it left twice. So now when we solve it out and we get that decimal number, we're having to move it to the right twice again to get it back to what that percent number would have been. All right, good job. You will practice these on a worksheet tomorrow.